All right, if you missed part one of building this chicken coop, then check out the link down in the description to get caught up on the build. I went over the framing, making the windows, building and attaching the roofs, and making and installing the nesting boxes. Let's go ahead and pick up right where I left off, which is making the roosting bars. Big thank you to The Great Courses Plus for sponsoring this video. Stay tuned after the project to hear more about them. On the last coop I built, I ran dowels across the coop and in a ladder formation coming up from the ground and just leaning into the wall. You just have to make sure that you don't go smaller than two inches in diameter or it's bad for their feet. Anyways, I took a different route for this coop just because I forgot to get dowels and I didn't want to make another trip to the store. I ripped a two by four down at the table saw, turned my blade over and cut in a chamfer on both sides of the rectangular board. See, the chicken is flat footed and then wraps its toes around the roosting bars. This chamfer will make it much more comfortable for the bird to grasp. Of course, these bars will get covered in poop, much like everything else. And I like the idea of making a holster for them to nest in where I can take them out and clean them when I clean the coop. You can see I used some two by fours to make this up, taping them together before cutting out the slot so that after one pass, both are done and identical. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I instinctively apologize to my camera when I knock into it. I think this is funny because I actually think of my camera as you guys. I moved them to the inside of the coop and attached them up on the wall right above the lower window. This does put it in a range that the chickens can't flap up to it. So later on, I show how I built a ramp for them to access them. All right, next major step is siding and it will save you a ton of time if you paint it before installing it. I went with T111 siding for it, and I went with the four inch on center panel since this is a smaller coop. I first used my larger ROS to give all of the sheets a quick sanding. I applied a coat of primer and then two coats of paint. And I found the best way to apply the paint to the T111 is to use a roller and just apply a good amount of pressure to get it into those grooves. My mom was also kind enough to be priming and painting the parts on the coop that needed color while I was doing the sheets. After letting everything dry for a bit, I started cutting the sheets into their needed panels. My folks dropped in, so I grabbed my dad's set of hands for a bit, as this part does go easier with two people. I used a few bussy quick clamps to hold the ledge in place for us to set the siding. Then dad held it in place so I could move around and make sure that it was plumb with the coop's framing. Once we had it where it needed to be, I used a few more clamps to hold it down. Oh, but before attaching it, which I was about to do, Dad suggested that we use it as a template for the other side. He's more than just a handsome face, that one. So we took it off, flipped it over, and then used it to trace out for the other side. When it came time to attach them, I laid down a line of tight bond construction adhesive, then set it back in place and used my nailer to attach it to the studs. After that was set, we repeated the steps on the other side. With those two sides knocked out, I moved to the back and started piecemealing it together. Okay, so you might notice here that I mess up. See where I'm placing that piece of siding? That's on the wrong side. I should be placing it over on the open side of the window, but I guess I had chickens on my brain and I didn't realize my oops until later in the build. Like an embarrassing long time later in the build, but more on that later. I designed a big removable panel in this back wall so that I can easily access the inside of the coop and clean it out. I attached siding all around this panel and then started working on the panel itself. I can't actually complete it until the trim step though. So after getting the parts cut, I just set them aside and continued on the other sides of the coop with siding. And if you're using tongue and groove sheets like I am, just make sure you pay attention to how you're cutting your parts so that whenever you line two up to one another, they will overlap correctly. I used my framing nailer when attaching to a stud, but I switched over to my bride nailer when attaching to the nesting boxes. Before moving on to the trim, I crawled inside the coop and cut the main door for the chickens to enter and leave. I also did this for the lower window on the opposite side, and I just used my small Triton recip saw to cut along my lines. Again, something you can do to simplify things is you can just make this one big square or rectangle. I added a cute roof shape to give it flare, but that means angles for the trim, which is the next step. I always find it amazing how much trim fancies something up. 
I repeated these same steps on the other side, saving the front drop door and the back panel for last. Moving to the front drop door first, I grabbed my siding that will make up the door and added trim to it. As you can see, I'm attaching the trim to the siding where it's in contact, but I also left trim overhanging. This is so that the trim acts as a stop for the door and also makes the door look complete when it's in the closed position. And you can see what I mean here when I dry fit it. Making sure the fit isn't too tight, I move to the bottom with a few sections of piano hinge and give it away to pivot up and down. Right now it won't stay closed on its own, but I'll come back later with some hardware to shut it. Now, it was when I moved to add the trim on the back of the coupe that I finally saw my window mistake. In order to fix it, I cut another piece of hardware cloth and attached it to the correct side, then threw trim on top of it. Since I already had trimmed out the other two sides, I had to rip off the trim to fix the mistake, but that's part of it. I've been at this for years now and I still make mistakes, obviously. It's okay to be frustrated by it, but don't be discouraged to the point of not fixing it and moving on. All right, let's make that back panel now. I did the same as I did on that front drop door. I set the siding in place and placed trim on top of it, making sure to attach part of the trim to the panel and then leave an amount overhanging so that it'll catch on the surrounding siding when it's set into place. The last thing needed to make this functional is a few barrel bolts. I went with four or one on each corner, but another option would be to put it on a hinge and have the entire panel swing out. I personally like the idea of it being completely moved out of the way when it comes time to clean the coupe. Okay, and with that, I think the body is done. So now let's move on to the roof. Literally, I climbed up with a few panels and started at the eave of the roof, then worked my way up to the peak. Instead of pre-cutting my panels, I just let one side run wild, then came back after it was all done to rip one line down and cut them to length. And yes, I was still watching my head. You can hear the wind whipping by my ear. All right, and now for the big job of moving this thing outside. First, a few framing members were added to the coupe so that it could be lifted up and set onto movable dollies. Then, even more framing members could be temporarily added to the coupe's base so that a tractor could pick it up from one side and a high boy jack could pick it up from the other. The goal is to get the coupe high enough so that a trailer can be slipped in underneath it. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. Once it clears the height of the trailer, it can be lowered back down strapped on tightly, and then delivered to site. When I was picking out where I wanted the coupe, I wanted it to be in shade the majority of the day, because again, it does get very hot in Texas. But I also wanted it to be close enough to the house so I could easily go out and retrieve the eggs. Now I'm gonna be letting my chickens free range, so I don't currently have a run built onto my coupe. However, if you like the coupe and wanna add a run, then you can very easily just butt it up to the side where the chicken door is. And that's gonna wrap up this build, guys. So four chickens, my neighbor is actually hatching me some chickens. So it'll be about a month before they can come over here and be introduced to their new home. If you want, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm very active on a daily basis on that platform and you can see the chickens or in the future, I'm thinking about building in a screened in run portion. And if I do that, of course I'll video it and then you can see the chickens uh, in their new coop. So links to everything are in the description, all the tools I use, the plans. If you're interested in some chicken signs, then of course those are on my website as well. All right, that's it for this one. I'll see you on my next project. I would like to thank this video sponsor, which is Great Courses Plus. The Great Courses Plus is a subscription on-demand video learning service with over 11,000 video and audio courses. These are taught by people like professors from Ivy League schools, experts from places like National Geographic, the Smithsonian, and the Culinary Institution of America. They've got courses and lectures on pretty much anything that interests you, from science, math, to subjects like cooking, or better photography, music, and more. I recently built a custom guitar, so I've personally been diving into a course called Learning to Play Guitar. This course is very in-depth and covers everything a beginner should know, including tuning, posture, and rhythm, and even next-level techniques like cross-picking and the blues scale. 
The Great Courses Plus allows me to learn at my own pace and where and when I want to. I can easily stream it from a laptop, a tablet, my phone, using the Great Courses app. If you want to check out any of the many different courses available, then you can go to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash April and start a free trial. Or you can click the link down in the description and start that free trial today. Big thank you to The Great Courses Plus for supporting what I do and sponsoring this video.